with the orbiters, you should be able to calculate what the... What the, the gravitational influence was. Yeah, what the perturbation is to the orbiters. Yeah, we did. It's the we shouldn't be here. <laughs> Why are we here? The orbit is, it didn't snap back. It means it still moved. Pardon me? The orbit of the Earth, you know? I mean, if you're saying that it changed the orbit of the Earth, then it's changed. Oh, it didn't. Because if it did change the orbit of the Earth, it would have changed the the calculation showed that it would have changed it significantly, okay, well, and uh, a significant change in our orbit would have generated tidal waves and all sorts of events on the surface of the planet that we didn't see. Well, well mostly necessarily, yes. Small change over time would be a big change. Over time. A small change for the short time. It wouldn't be a small change. It would be a large change, including Mercury going into the sun behind the comet, <laughs> you know? Uh, you're talking a huge gravitational field here, extremely large. Uh, I believe that we were given another chance. And we're really not here, we just think we're not. Well, I think we're floating in grace. We're definitely floating in grace at this point, and somebody is taking care of us. Go ahead. Then with a tail that large, I'm amazed that we didn't get more of a visual on that thing from Earth. Well, it's because of the angle at which it, which it came in and the angle of the Earth relative to it. It was not easily available. But there's pictures on the net of it. People took pictures in the morning of the comet. It's enormous. It occurred that quickly. It was pretty yeah, it was moving extremely hours. fast. It moved extremely fast. Within the question of a few days, it was out of our solar system. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, the expand yeah, the the expanded gas, that's a good point. Uh, the expanded gas of that comet um, is much larger than the sun. You, you see you see the size of the of the perturbation and the expansion of the gases around the comet um, makes the size of the comet actually much larger than twice the size of Jupiter. Um, so when they say twice the size of Jupiter, they're talking about the nuclei of this comet. Because the material around it, this is the size of the sun. The material around it makes it almost as large as the sun. Are you talking about size or mass? I'm talking about size. The mass is directly related to its composition, which is supposed to be mostly ice and rocks. So, um, uh, well, yeah, but that would be an unusual comet. In general, comets are ice and rocks. an extremely large mass. And the calculations show with a, with a comet made out of ice and rock of this size, the gravitational field is extraordinary, is enormous. Go ahead. Yeah, this was definitely a comet. But they were protected by other forces, but this wasn't, if this was just a comet, that was really... That's right. Because, you see, on this on this one, you know, unlike the, the videos of these other objects, you can tell there's a pretty good tail there, you know? <laughs> I mean, this is a tail the size of an astronomical unit, almost, from the sun to the Earth, you know? Um, so that's, you know, that's appropriate for a comet, you see?
Go ahead. What's the source of this? Is this an a, this is an animation, obviously, since the Earth is in it, or is it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. This is uh, this is a program that gives you the activities that are going on in the solar system. But it's based on measurements. Yeah, yeah, it's all absolutely accurate to what's going on out there. At least some of the stuff that's released by NASA, in any case. That's actual footage, right? That's actual footage, yeah. This is not an animation. This is pictures taken by Soho of this comet going by. Go ahead. With regards to the flip, what, what are your information and thoughts on what the latitude was from with regards to the sun, where that came from, and was that, might that affect... Good that would have created a large perturbation in our daily life. <laughs> now, um, the sun is not, you know, the activity that's going on in our solar system is, is just outrageous right now. You guys need to know about this. It's uh, it's kind of nuts. This is what the sun does every year. Uh, every 11 years, I'm sorry. It's called the sun cycle. Every 11 year, the sun flips its poles. Its north pole becomes its south pole, and its south pole becomes its north pole. And when it does that, and I, I don't mean that it flips its physical poles, it, fills, it flips its magnetic poles. And when it does that, every 11 years, it goes from a smooth surface with not too many sunspots to more and more sunspots <coughs> till it reaches its peak and flips its pole and then it goes back to normal. It goes back to this type of structure. So this was the approach to the next, to the last sun cycle, the last solar, the last solar maximum. Go ahead. Is the solar maximum concurrent with the minimum magnetic field? Just <coughs> no, it's concurrent with the maximum magnetic field. The magnetic field becomes extremely active because of all of the sunspots generated generate a huge magnetic field and huge x-ray emission as well. Sunspots generate huge x-ray emissions. And that's because material is being sucked in inside a black hole. And you expect x-ray emission from that. But um, as you look at the sun, you find that uh, these sunspots, you know, are supposed to go to a maximum and then go back to normal. So here is the sun in 97. The sunspot maximum was 2000. And then 2001, uh, actually at the end of 2000, the beginning of 2001, and then it's supposed to go back to this. So 97, 98, it's starting to get more active. 99, you can see there's a lot of activity. And then 2000, it reached its maximum. And now it's supposed to be back to normal. Is it? No. no. This is the sun a few months ago. There's more sunspots on the sun than ever before. Some days they have recorded over 200 sunspots. There's never been so many sunspots on the sun. In fact, since Galileo, we haven't seen anything like it. The sun is not calming down at all. Now, the last sun cycle was 2001, plus 11 years. That gives you the date for the next sun cycle of 2012. The end of the Mayan calendar, which tells us that we are approaching a time where we are going to move into the sixth sun. 
Right. 